I just want to prepare you that today's episode is a bit weird. It's kind of a shameless plug, but it's drenched in self-loathing and sadness. So join with me as I complain about how some of my favorite JHS pedals don't sell and how you really shouldn't buy them because at this point, who cares? I started JHS by accident in 2007 and I've made a lot of pedals over the years. I've had a lot of success, had a lot of heartache, I've had a lot of failure, and I've had some pedals that just people don't like. So today I'm gonna to show you several pedals that are not successful, but I love them. I spent a lot of time on the designs. I think they're some of our best designs and uh, most original circuits for the most part, but you know, nobody likes them. So they must suck and uh, the whole point of today is like I'm gonna play these horrible pedals for you to convince you to never buy them. You're already not buying them, and today I'm gonna to seal the deal on that. I'm approaching the elephant in the room, staring it right in the eyes and just saying, you don't want these. Here we go. The first pedal that you never ever need to buy because it is horrible is the JHS Lucky Cat. The Lucky Cat came out in 2017, but it really started in 2010 as the Pink Panther. These are pretty rare. I've seen them go for prices that are quite embarrassing, five, six hundred dollars, so whatever. And here's the deal. We put this out, but it originally came out as Pink Panther, and it was technically a version two. But then one day I came to work. There was a manila envelope, it said urgent. It was rushed to me by DHL. It was from MGM. They didn't like the use of that name, so right off the bat, my new release had to change its name, which spiraled it into a black hole of chaos and oblivion, and uh, that wasn't good, because I had to redo all the marketing and branding. People got confused. We do have another black color that equally confuses people, and it just makes it a horrible product. So here's the thing. I'm gonna play it. It's, uh, it's a digital delay with a tape delay mode as well, and it harkens back to the DD5, which is one of my favorite delays ever, and the DE7. I love both of these. They're really cool rare pedals, and I think this does a really good job of these. Um, the analog components here I designed, and then Robert Keeley wrote the code for the digital portion. So I'm really proud of it, but people just don't buy it. And obviously when people aren't buying stuff, it means it's really bad. So let's jam on it. That was a fun jam. It was kind of a Pink Floydy, bouncy kind of thing. I liked it, it was nice. I don't know why it doesn't sell that well. Maybe it's pink. There's a lot of you watching this and you're scared to put something pink on your board and I understand. Pink's a tough color. It says something about you or it says something not about you. Maybe that's why it hasn't sold. Maybe you don't like cats. Maybe you're a dog person. I need to move on. The next pedal is from 2014. Uh, it is the Twin 12. Overdrive. There's two versions. The first version didn't have the toggle here, so let's focus on the V2. It uh, has a red remote switch, so you can remotely activate that. Now, what this pedal is, is awesome to me. I'm really proud of it. I took the Silvertone 1484 amplifier, and we basically built that exact amp circuit in here, but replaced the valve tubes with FET transistors, and we hand bias each one. It is an amp in a box. It's a really nice, cranked, original feeling amp sound because that Silvertone amp's pretty special. You hear it on a lot of Jack White, White Stripes records. Uh, Coldplay has used this amp. Beck uses this amp, so it's really nice. So I'm just gonna turn it up and uh, it's really touch dynamic. So with this Strat, when I play light, it's gonna sound clean and when I bite into it, it's gonna sound more distorted, so. Yeah, let's check it out. But don't buy it.
That was fun. I, you know, I don't know why it doesn't sell. I've had some huge artists tell me they love this. Uh, a lot of people love it on slide as well. I don't know. Maybe it's the icon. Originally, you know, the icon idea was silver tone 1484, so a silver dollar. But the lady on the silver dollar it didn't work right, so we ended up with Lady Liberty from the Statue of Liberty, and it's this weird crossover, and it, it's complicated and confusing. Maybe you see the icon, and you're like, I can't handle this. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Whatever it is, just don't buy it. It sounds great. I'm really proud of it, but I need you to stay away from it. Let's move on. The next JHS pedal that you definitely should never buy is the Spring Tank. Now, Spring Tank is a play on Spring Reverb Tank, the tank that's inside your amp. And, you know, there's a tank here. I don't know. Maybe tanks offend you. Maybe people have been offended by this. And if, if a tank has offended you, I'm sorry. Um, I could change the icon. I still don't think you'd buy it. Either way, I'm going to play it. And here's a feature I love of this pedal. It does spring-ish style reverbs, but honestly, it doesn't do them that well. And I say that as a positive thing. It's a quirky lo-fi reverb. It has more of a slapback sound than a reverb. So it's different, really unique, and I'm surprised people haven't caught on to it. And the best feature is this jack for effects loop. So what you do, take any pedal. I'm gonna use an old blood noise dweller, which is this crazy ambient device. And I have this cable that is TRS stereo on one end and splits it out here, so in and out. I'm gonna plug that in to the effects loop. Now when I do that, when I play this, the reverb only will have this in its effects loop, meaning the clean guitar is still clean, but the echo, the reverb being produced by the spring tank will be affected by whatever's in it. You could put a wah pedal in it, a fuzz pedal, another reverb, octave, whatever. I'm putting this in here. I'm going to turn this up really high so it's crazy ambient and you're going to hear it inside of this reverb. And then another cool feature is you can choose, do you want this on both tank modes? Because the way this pedal's made is you have one knob for a spring tank setting one. And when you hit the switch, you get a second level. It's almost like having two reverb presets. Well, I have chosen on the side to only activate the effects loop when I'm in tank two. That means I'm in tank one, you're gonna hear the normal spring tank reverb. When I hit this, you're gonna hear that reverb plus this. So you have this wild ability to use presets. Again, I don't know why it's not popular. And technically, it's a V2 of the Alpine. People don't wanna to come to terms with that. Some people say the Alpine sounds better. This is the exact same circuit. The exact same circuit, same circuit. It's just smaller with a different icon and name. Let me say that again. This does not sound better than this. This and this are the same thing. So this is a version two Alpine. And what's weird is the Alpine is technically a version two of the Cloud 9 that I bought from Jim who made this pedal back in the day. So in a way, the spring tank is a version three of a Cloud 9. That's confusing, maybe that's why. But let's jam and let's understand together why you don't want it. Sounded great to me, but you know, it probably sounded horrible to everyone watching because no one's really buying it. So I guess it doesn't sound good. Maybe I'm wrong. The next JHS pedal you definitely need to not buy. Like, I know you've been thinking about it, a couple of you, probably two of you. Don't do it. Don't buy it. Uh, it's the cheese ball. This is from 2019, and it is an exact replica of the big cheese. Now, the big cheese is from Love Tone. I've done an episode on this. This pedal's so expensive, probably around a grand. Uh, 
I have this whole set. They're amazing, they're iconic. No one had replicated it correctly, in my opinion. I'd never seen anyone replicate it right. There's a schematic that floated around on the internet, had some errors compared to three units that I have. So reverse this, got it perfect, and release this at 179, which is cheaper than our other pedals. Again, I don't know why anybody, I don't know, I don't know. At first it did sell okay. It sold okay, and then it just, it just went downhill. I think, you know, maybe what I need to come to terms with is a lot of guitar players are lactose intolerant, and this is about cheese. And you see it and you go, oh, I can't do that. I don't know. Uh, it's sad. I'm just gonna play it. Uh, it has this cool switch which changes the tone profile, can make it gate. I'm gonna put it on like a kind of a big fuzzy kind of distortion sound. I'm gonna add in some delay with this lucky cat that you definitely should not buy. I already said that, but. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm just gonna play this and just remind you, don't buy this pedal. I really like that. I feel like that jam was kind of like grunge Andy Timmons. Like if Andy had chosen another road, the grunge road. Let's go to the next pedal. I'm gonna close off with a pedal that's related to probably one of my most successful pedals ever. It's expensive. This is the version one, there's a version two now, but people buy it all day. But right now somebody bought one. And again, it's super successful. Um, but they don't buy this. This came out a bit after this. So in 2015, I released the Crayon. And let me break it down for you in case it's confusing and maybe that's why you don't buy it. So the Crayon is one crayon from the color box. Just imagine being a kid, you're at the craft table and um, you pull a single crayon. So what are we pulling here? What does the crayon do? Well, see those three red knobs? It's that red section of the color box. It is the dirt distortion fuzz section preamp. What this means is this is the original idea for the color box. When I first envisioned it, this is all I ever saw. And then when we got into the design, I started learning more. We saw what we could do, it turned into this. So this is actually what I always intended the color box to be. You know what's crazy? It just doesn't sell. Like the edge has this in his rig, you too. The edge, it's been like seen. People still don't care. It does everything. Clean boost, preamp, overdrive, distortion, fuzz, spitting, gating fuzz, has a high pass filter, and it has the best and coolest roll off with your volume on your guitar. Clean it up and it cleans up this bright, chimey, beautiful sound. I'm gonna demonstrate that. But I just wanna warn you, just don't buy it. You know, nobody's buying it now and I need to keep it that way. Um, and the irony is this is one of, this is probably the most original distortion pedal design we've ever done. And I would go as far as to say in the pedal market in the last 10, 15 years, one of the most original designs ever, but it doesn't sell and that's okay. I'm going to jam on it and you're going to understand and then uh, we'll move on.
That was pretty cool how it went from sparkling, amazing clean tones to sputtering madness. I didn't have time to demo all the other sounds it does in between, um, but just don't buy it. You know, it's not selling so far, so we definitely don't want to start selling it. Um, while we're at it, uh, there's, I've just allowed is more good amp. We've had it for a while. There's actually some in stock at Sweetwater. Um, could, could you roll, Aston, could you roll that over? That, you know, the amp that nobody really buys anymore. Yeah, here's the deal. It's a good amp, uh, but I, I think there's obvious glaring problems. It's made really well. It has a weird name, Loud is More Good. I understand it's not, you know, grammatically correct or whatever the word is. One channel, yeah, no channel switching. No effects, doesn't have reverb or trim. All the power goes straight to the tone of the channel and that's uncalled for. You know, you don't want it to sound too good. Uh, the speaker's really nice. It doesn't have any color. I should have made it red, but I messed up with that. That's fine. No master volume, no effects loop, no fancy endorsements either. Can I have a, like a Kleenex to wipe my tears? What kind of Kleenex is this? Now it's time to watch Josh have a meltdown. I just wish stuff sold sometimes. I mean, other stuff sells. I'm, we're doing fine. We're actually at our best year last year, but it's not all about money. Sometimes you just want people to buy the stuff that you make, you know? You just want people to love the things that you design. My blood sugar is plummeting. Is there like an apple or something? Some coconut water? It's like really hot in here. These are like my best circuits. People just don't care. I can only do what I do, you know? And if nobody here likes that, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, I lay my head on the pillow and I know these pedals are exceptional. But I also don't want anybody to buy them because it feels like a burden now. And the last thing I want to do is cause a burden. I don't want people to think of JHS as the product they need to buy. I never wanted that. I just want to, I just want people to see these cool things that I see as cool that we worked really hard on. You know, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I hate everything. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Where are you going? I can't get away from me. Today's record time is brought to you by a record from 2020, a very weird year. It was a very good record. It is Spoon's album called All the Weird Kids Up Front. And here's why I chose this for today, because Spoon's a band that I have a lot of friends and people say, I can't get into them, you know? Or they say that and then they become obsessed with them. What's cool about this, this is a fan picked, a fan pick greatest hits record. Um, so it's all the tracks that the fans really love that aren't considered radio hits. And you know, a lot like pedals that aren't successful. These songs weren't technically successful, but a lot of people love them. Honestly, this purifier, Don't Make Me a Target, Fitted Shirt, Beast and Dragon, Who Makes Your Money, my favorite Spoon song is track one on side two, Paper Tiger, yeah. Check it out, Spoon. All the weird kids up front. You need to know about it because, you know, sometimes the things that aren't popular are really good. Sometimes they're not. This is really good, though. Thanks so much for watching this episode and enduring this pain with me. I know it got weird, but, you know, if you watched it this far, it's kind of like we're family and family's weird. So hit like if you liked it. Subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. And a new thing, you can click in the link in the description below and go to a band lab site for the jhs show download every jam we do and even a lot of past jams and jam with us all the time create your own music along with our riffs drum grooves all that stuff it's fun do that and just remember don't buy these pedals don't buy them don't do it i know you want to stop it stop stop <laughs>